Good morning, my friend. I hope you're doing well. It is Friday morning out here on the river in Nebraska. I'm actually recording this on Tuesday morning, and it is zero degrees. It's cold out there. I hope you're warm and safe wherever you are. Listen, we've only got a few days left in 2022. This has been a a three-year stretch of of tough times and hardship for some people, and for most of us have been through a lot in the last few years. And I pray that that you are finding your way through this dry December as we're grabbing onto that Isaiah 43, 18, and 19 promise of letting God dry some things up so he can do a new thing in our lives. And planning, you know, making streams in the wilderness, making a way where there is no way. And if you've been circling around the same old issues for several years, I hope that these episodes from, from New Thing November and Dry December have been helpful to you. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you and seeing what 2023 is going to look like and what you've decided to dry up and what new things you're praying for. Listen, Friday conversations have become one of my favorite parts of the podcast, and we've been trying to bring you interesting and useful guests who have inspiring stories, and today is no exception. A few years ago, um, I ran across a woman named Kristen Smedley who contacted me through my friend's Tiffany and Scotty Smiley. You've heard me talk about the Smileys before. Um, Scotty Smiley was a, a soldier in Iraq that I operated on, and we reconnected a few years later, and he has an unbelievable and amazing story, and they've been on the podcast before. Um, and Kristen it has two sons that were born blind, and, and so she's uh, made, a, made a, basically a path for her family that has turned into a mission to help other people with visually impaired situations. Uh, and, and so Kristen Smedley and I connected, and then they invited me to their podcast, which she co-hosts with a woman named Mary Fran Bontempo. Well, I didn't know Mary Fran until I had the chance to be on their show, Brilliantly Resilient, back in 2020. And since then, I've been amazed at the just the writing and the humor uh, and the impact that Mary Fran is having on the world. Mary Fran Bontempo is a writer. Uh, she was a newspaper columnist back in the days when, um, if you remember, Irma Bombeck and Paul Harvey and people like that that used to do kind of long-form, inspirational, and helpful content. Well, Mary Fran was one of those people that wrote humorous, um, sort of insightful content, mostly aimed at women, and she wrote a couple of books. And as that industry evolved and changed, she found herself kind of being on the on the back end of a career before she was ready for it. And she wrote a book called Not Ready for Granny Panties that was, was basically about this idea that you're you're being obsoleted before you're ready to. And, and then something happened in her family. She had an encounter uh, with addiction uh, with one of her children, and it just kind of changed the whole nature of her life. And, and her story since then is one of incredible resilience and the power of faith and hope. And she started uh, basically advocating and working and trying to just – restore her family but also to help other people through their dark journeys and she and Kristen connected and they have the brilliantly resilient podcast and they've written a book together and mary fran has done two ted talks uh, she's uh, become a really helpful person in the personal development and recovery and, and hope and faith and um, self-help space and i've just had an opportunity to sit down with her via zoom and have an incredible conversation and i think the thing i took away from it the most was the fact that whatever happens in your life if you if you persevere and hold on to hope and hang on to faith, you will find eventually that you can look back on all the times in your life before and there will be some threads that you could see that if you pulled on them, you could put together this story that you're living now and find out that God was faithful and with you in those hard times and he was using all of those events to prepare you for whatever massive thing was coming or whatever work or plan that he had for you now. And her story is one where you can look back on her life and see that all all these things that were happening were preparing her to handle her son's addiction and his overdose and all the problems that he had to keep her family together, maintain faith and hope, and find a new story that they're telling that's beautiful and turns out to be brilliantly resilient. I'm excited to bring you my friend Mary Fran Bontempo today. I'll put links in the show notes to her books and her website and her podcast and all that. But uh, And you should take 15 minutes to watch her Lehigh TED Talk. Uh, it was really helpful. Uh, and I think it, it it's encouraging and inspiring and it'll help you. So we're going to have a talk with Mary Fran Bontempo, and you can learn from her that you can't change your life until you change your mind, no matter what you're going through. And as Lisa always tells us, you can start today. Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self-brain surgery. 
you can learn it, and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is, you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery to get it done if you like the show. Please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. Hey, friend, we're back, and I'm so excited uh, to be back uh, together with my friend Mary Fran Bontempo. Welcome back, Mary Fran. I'm excited to be here, Lee. Thanks so much for the invite. You're welcome. Actually, I, t- to be correct, I should say welcome because I was on your show. This is the first time you've been on my show. So welcome to my show. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I had a chance to sit with you and Kristen Smedley back in 2020, back in the early days of the pandemic, and we had a good talk back then. So been on my list to get back together with you. And I just want to introduce my listeners around the world to you because you you're kind of a remarkable person in that you you've you've evolved over time and from one career to another and and really evolved because of hardship which is why you'll resonate with my listeners and and let's just tell your story just just give me a kind of a big picture of who you are and what you've been through before we get into this conversation well i was a a typical northeast philly catholic school kid Catholic school all the way through, I mean, right up through college and everything. And, you know, in the Catholic church, you kind of, and I think in a lot of religions, you grow up believing that if you do everything right, follow yep. the rules, do all the right stuff, then everything's going to turn out. That's right. And um, I was fortunate, met my husband relatively young, we got married, three kids, and all was great until it wasn't. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, as I said, follow the rules, youth minister at my parish, church singer, the whole nine yards. And then uh, I always loved writing. That was always something that was a real part of me. Um, but I tended to write kind of humorous, funny things. And I was a newspaper columnist for quite a while. Uh, yeah. And I wrote Irma Bombeck type humor, which yeah. those of your listeners of a certain age will remember that lovely woman. That's right. Who, uh was really great at kind of poking fun at the everyday weirdness of life. Yep. So I did that. And then um, I thought things were going pretty well. Um, I knew my son was having some struggles, but then uh, on Mother's Day of 2010, I found out that he was a heroin addict. And that's a very abbreviated version of the whole the whole story. Yeah. So, so before that happened, um, mm-hmm. y- your industry was evolving and changing and you responded to that by writing a couple of books and, and you, cause you weren't ready to hang it up. So you wrote a book called <laughs> not ready for granny panties. Like, talk, <laughs> talk about that for a second. Well, you know, there are so many things in our culture that, that influence the way we think, whether they're right. true or not. You know, and the whole idea of ageism and of reaching a certain age and you get put on a shelf. And I was like, well, no, no, I'm not ready for granny panties yet. I was experiencing something with a friend and and talking, you know, kind of lamenting that whole idea of aging and getting to a certain place. And I was like, I'm so not ready for granny panties. And then I, the writer in me immediately perked up and went, I could do something with that. Yeah. (laughs) And it became um, my kind kind of my platform um, for addressing those things and just kind of saying to people a lot, you know, men and women, obviously it was geared towards women because I'm a, I'm a woman, but um, just saying, you know what, like, don't let other people define you. you. You, if you have something to offer, don't let the norms of what society accepts as becoming the, the playbook for your life, write your own playbook. That's right. You wrote a book about uh, dirty words that, that women ought not to say. Let's talk about that. I, one first. Did. I, love that. I did. And I, I, I specifically, as you can tell by the granny panties title and the woman's book of dirty words, they are meant to be provocative, but right. not in, not in a, you know, a confrontational kind of way. The dirty words are not what you would think. That's right. They're words like relax. When people say to a woman, Oh, just relax. They don't mean relax. They mean, leave me alone. 
get out of my yeah. face. Um, so it was relax. It was words like change. It was words like uh, vacation, which right. people think for women, oh, I'm going to go on vacation. No woman with a family goes on vacation. That's they right. they <laughs> go into and battle and, and get ready. Yeah. Yeah. For all that stuff. So, and it was also about, there was one word in there that I, that I really wanted women to get comfortable with. And that was the word fine. Right. Because we have this mentality where everything has to be an, an awesome experience. Everything has to be, you know, an apex experience. If you live your life expecting that you're going to constantly be disappointed. So I was like, you know what, if it's fine, it's fine. Fine. We're moving on. Right. And I, and I brought that up for, first of all, because these are great books and you can get Mary Fran's books on Amazon or on her website, Mary Fran And I'll put all these links in the show notes. but, but these are a couple of threads Really, I, I like to look back and see how God was working in somebody's life to prepare them almost for something that was coming. And you had a couple of things that, that required you to develop some resilience. Your career's changing. You're getting older. You're, you're, you know, the world is, is putting people like you on a shelf and, and all those things. And you're preparing, God's preparing you for a season that's coming that you never would have anticipated. And that's when your son's troubles hit. So, so what happens when you get that phone call and you find out your son has overdosed and he might die or he might have to have a liver transplant? Like, what does that do to your world? Well, I have to say my favorite movie in the whole world is The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And that was my personal tornado. That was that that thing that just pulls up everything that you have planted, everything that you think you've set down roots, all of those places where you think this is my stable place. Suddenly all that goes away. Yep. And and you are really left adrift in the truest sense of the word, because as you well know, when something happens with one of your family and your children, suddenly nothing else matters. And it takes you back to your most basic self, which at That's the true. time you certainly don't see as, as a blessing or as anything. And I'm never one of those people that goes, Oh, that really lousy thing that happened was a blessing. I'm like, no, it was really (laughs) awful. It was not a blessing. But I do think that it it gives you an opportunity for a couple of things. Again, taking you back to those basic places where you where you really get to say, okay, what's important to me? What are my non-negotiables? What are my real true values that I will not compromise on? And then, and this is something I think that's really hard for people. It gave me an opportunity to surrender because I didn't yeah. have a choice. That's you know, right. nobody like everybody thinks surrender's a, a defeat. No, nope. and I realized it was not that. It ended up being the thing that saved me, basically. Yeah. You talk about the, the these fifteen minute increments um, after your son was sick, and and in those moments, in those days when you weren't sure what was going to happen, um, mm-hmm. and you ended up writing a book about that fifteen minute master, which is brilliant. Um, but talk about that. I'm going to give you a quote from your TED talk. There's a there's a link I'm going to put in the show notes to your TEDx talk that was I think wonderfully done about giving up awesome, ending our addiction to awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. let, let me give you this quote, and I just want you to talk about it for a minute. You said you you just set up this idea that that in the aftermath of what was happening with your son, you couldn't take it one day at a time. You couldn't take it one hour at a time. You'd take it 15 minutes at a time. It was about all you can tolerate. Um, and you said 15 minutes doesn't give a lot of time to be amazing. So what you do manage to accomplish can just be fine. It doesn't need to be anything more. Fine becomes the height of the bar by which you live. If it's fine, you accept it and you move on to something more important. That that There's some juice in that. I want you to unpack that for me. Well, and again, I think, as you aptly said, I was being set up for this. Like when I wrote the Dirty Words book, fine was one of the dirty words. Little did I know that that was really going to become a cornerstone of the way I had to live. When you are in such a desperate experience, and, and this applies to anyone's desperate experience, you really have to take perfect awesome, amazing. You take all that stuff off the table right? and you just go, what are the basics that I can do within this next 15 minute period that will make things better, better, meaning not solved, not perfect, right? just better. 
And we have to recognize that that in and of itself is, is a measure of progress. And sometimes, sometimes that better is doing nothing and just saying, all right, Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah. I need a break. You know, like that, that whole experience of, again, not giving up, but giving it up, yep. giving that, that, that pain and that experience and just going, Lord, I have done as much as I can do in this moment. So I just need you to give me these next 15 minutes to recharge. I'm handing it to you for now. Yep. And then you allow yourself to just be fine in that moment. It's that's very right. powerful when you give up the need to be awesome. That's right. You know, I think that's one of those places where there's there's that promise in Romans eight twenty eight that that's a hard one when you're hurting. It says God will work everything for good for those that love the Lord. Like you can't accept that in the moment. It's not good that my son overdosed. It's not good that my son died. But what happened is something previous that had happened to you that hurt then and was hard then prepared you, sharpened you, it strengthened you to be able to to get to that place where you could endure those 15 minutes in that hospital that night. And that was good. That's That was a kept promise for you. And I, and I want to encourage our listeners right now, like Mary Fran's story to me is so encouraging because here you've got this articulate, brilliant, great writer who's gone through all these hard things and now she's in a desperate situation. And she was prepared for it because of being faithful and being submissive uh, to to endurance and, and hardship before and not giving up. So I love that. I uh, love that story. How did you go from there um, moving forward with your family? Like, like what happened next? What was the, what was the arc of your family? What did it look like after that difficult time? Well, during that time, it was really challenging. David's my oldest of my three and I have two daughters. Um, and, and as you can imagine, well, first of all, living life with an addict is is like living life with a, a crazy person. I mean, yeah. it's just there's there's no stability. There's no you you this person whom you knew, whom you raised, who was a member of your family, a loving member of your family is it's like that that movie years ago with the pod people where somebody comes <laughs> in and just takes them over. They're like you're like who what who is this? So it's it's so incredibly disruptive. The challenge is that it's not only disruptive in that moment, it leaves scars. Yep. It leaves real damage in the aftermath. So it becomes um, a period of, of real rebuilding that you have to embark on yep. for everyone. And I think what you have to do and what we all have to do in those circumstances is, is recognize that it's a process it's not going to happen overnight. We have to be kind to ourselves in terms of recognizing that you're not going to feel warmly towards this person who disrupted your entire world. It's not going to, you know, yes, you love that person, but you do not like them. That's right. You don't like them. You don't like what they did to your life. You didn't ask for any of that. What you also have to make clear to them is the same thing. Look, this is a process. You created these memories for me. And right now they're cellular. They're like in my cells. Something yeah. happens and I am right back at the bad place. As we slowly progress and we build new memories, then we start to find each other again. Yeah. But it's so important to know that it's a process because once somebody's sober, that doesn't mean they're not still crazy. They're crazy. <laughs> yeah. They're completely nuts because they have to rebuild their entire lives. That's right. And, and the lack of drugs does not make everything okay. Yeah. It's a healing we, process. We went to yeah. Church a lot. We prayed a lot and went to church a lot. <laughs> That's right. And you call this, so you call these things that come along in life, you know, as a humorist, you call them sucker punches. Like when I was getting to know you and, and Kristen Smedley, um, your platform, both of you kind of built around um, what happens when life throws you this sucker punch? Like, like, so talk about that for a second. Like how, how first of all, how you and Kristen got together? Um, Cause I think what the work that you're doing with Brilliantly Resilient is, Brilliant. It's great. It's very helpful. <laughs> um, but how did, how did you get together and, and talk about what people do when they encounter these sucker punches and give us some tools for a minute? Uh, Cause I think you're a great teacher, Mary Fran. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, and Kristen and I actually realized we were brought together by a friend in a group of women who were looking to build businesses and writing careers and those kinds of things. Right. 
Um, and it, we soon realized that we had a kinship because of the fact that we both had what we call sucker punches. You know, Kristen is raising two blind boys. Yep. Her, her daughter is sighted, her third child. And I had my situation with my son. And as we got to know each other and started talking about our process for getting through, we realized that, in fact, we were doing a lot of the same things yep. in terms of how to get through these challenges and work through that process. So after a while, we were like, you know what, we we need to share this with people. I think yeah. Kristen and I also both have the attitude that when you have a tragedy, when you have a real challenge in your life, you got a couple of choices. One is to play the victim. Not my not my thing. One is to experience it, sit on it, and then run away far as away as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And and a lot and, and I, you know, it it took me a while to be able to talk about all of this because it it again it leaves scars. Yeah. But the third one to me is the one that I think is if you have faith and you you're constantly wondering why this is the why the why is that now it becomes part of your mission to help other people walk them home through this, yep. this experience. And Kristen and I felt a really strong urge to do that, to share what we experienced. So for me, the 15 minute master, we incorporated a lot of that into the brilliantly resilient thing. Yeah. And, and the whole thing for me was you ask yourself three really basic questions. And the first one is what can I do? And the emphasis is on the word can. What can I actually do? What's within my power? What do I have control over? What can I actually do to make a difference in this situation? Yeah. And you have to get super clear on that because obviously we all just want the problem to go away and we spend a lot of time in coulda, woulda, shoulda, and what if world, but that doesn't help us. What can I actually do? And then once you ask that question, the next one is, okay, I can do these things. You come up with a couple of options, but what should I do? Yeah, they're not always the same. Yeah, just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do it. You know, (laughs) when I talk to women a lot, and and again, I use humor whenever I can to teach, but um, I saw this sign in a store one time and it said, I'm not a control freak, but can I tell you the right way to do that? (laughs) That was probably a neurosurgeon. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it it becomes also about knowing your place in the situation and knowing where it's it's your either job or opportunity to to step in and maybe try and make a difference or sometimes to step out and either let the problem unknot itself, empower the person going through the problem to kind of help figure it out. No. Um, or just go, you know what? Somebody else has to step in here. I need to step back and retreat. And that's that's then the last question is, what are you going to do? And right. there are a couple of options. One is be brave and courageous, which is what I needed to do. One is do nothing and see what happens for a period of time. And the third one is that retreat. I call it retreat, yeah. which is step back, surrender, and see what God's next step is. Right. But not just give up. Just no. do. Mm-mm. What can I do? What should I do? What am I actually going to do? What am I actually going to do? Yeah. And, and you know, when we break it down into that, and again, this is one action step. That's all you're looking for. One. One action right. step. A 15-minute segment of your life. Yep. And, and my friend uh, implement that action step, and then you you see what happens. That's because right. Because one of two things are going to happen, something or nothing. That's right. And you react then the next segment, the next 15 minutes. My friend John Swanson is a hospital chaplain, pastor and writer. And, and he talks about, he's in, he's in that moment with people every day where somebody's dying or, or somebody's fat had found out they've got terminal cancer or something. And, And he says, sometimes the best thing you can do is just recognize that you you can only take the next breath. Like, like it's not 15 minutes. It's the next second because it's mm-hmm. everything is out of control and you got to find a way to get it back in control. And that's sometimes it's just, okay, I can breathe. I can do that. Now I did that and it was hard, but I'm going to do it again. And so I love that it, friend. The, the, the answer is not always that we solve the problem in that 15 minute segment or that one second segment. But the answer is that we make a decision that there are some things we can control and some decisions and actions that we can 
going to take. And one of them might be, like Mary Fran said, we surrender and let God handle it for that moment. And that's not defeat. I love how you pointed that out. So surrender sometimes is, is acceptable and sometimes it's right. Sometimes it's necessary. So I love how you, how you did that. How did the TED Talk thing come about for both of you? Is it, was it the same place, Lehigh, that both of you did that? Uh, Kristen was at a program um, in New York. I was at Lehigh, and I actually did a second one at uh, Loyola University in in uh, Maryland. Oh, Maryland. Okay. And, um, you know, TED Talks are the kind of things where you you apply. They're absolutely terrifying. They are utterly (laughs) and completely terrifying. I did them. I'm so happy that I did them. I do not ever want to do one again. (laughs) But again, I think it becomes about when you feel like you have a message that you really want to resonate with people. And for me, it was I really wanted to be on those college campuses because we spend so much time educating. And I'm using air quotes here, our young people um, in in things that may not only not be practical, but we are constantly telling people. Well, you have to change your mindset. You have to change your mindset. Well, nobody tells them how to do that. That's right. Nobody, nobody gives you those practical strategies and nobody says them to things like you don't have to be awesome all the time. In fact, That's right. you're not going to be awesome. I always, I always say to kids when I'm talking to groups of kids, do you remember how your mom said you can do anything you want? I say, no, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. You can try whatever you want, but we have to accept that failure is also not defeat. That's right. When we're when we're children, babies fall an average of 17 times an hour when they're learning to walk. <laughs> wow. 17 times. Could you imagine if like as adults we we failed 17 times within an hour, we'd all be running into traffic. That's right. But babies and children recognize that failure is an intrinsic part of learning. That's right. It's only when we get older and associate it with shame that we're afraid to fail. That's right. So it was really important to me to get that message out there. Like you're not going to be awesome every day. Be thankful. Like what a relief. Thank God. I don't have to be awesome at everything. That's right. That's right. I only have to be awesome where I'm gifted to be and where I'm supposed to be. And then you need to be. So, I mean, your, your point in the Ted talk that I listened to from Lehigh was, was actually spot on. It's like, give up all this striving for stuff that you're not gifted at and you're never going to achieve. You know, I'm at this point in my life, I'm not going to be a major league baseball player. Right. So it's not, it's not real. It's not smart for me to pursue something that's never going to happen. But if I if I spend my life tilting at windmills and things that are impossible, then I miss the places where I actually am supposed to be here for and supposed to be gifting and giving other people and, and making the world a better place. I love that point. So what's yeah. what's and happening? Go ahead. That's where Kristen and I actually with the brilliantly resilient piece comes in where, where we were like, you know, I'm not good at a lot of things, but I'm really good at some things. Yeah. And, and the same thing with Kristen. And we were like, why are we always trying to improve our weaknesses? So this is where we came up with the, let's just tell people to work their brilliance. Wouldn't the world be a much better place? So yeah. to your point earlier, all of that stuff ended up feeding into the kind of work that we're doing now. And that's something. So all this stuff that you go through in your life, if you allow it to, becomes part of your spiritual formation and prepares you for what comes next. So I love that. And you guys are available, right? You're, you're both uh, – you're doing public speaking. Groups can hire you um, and even in, individually but also with Brilliantly Resilient. So I'll put links to how you can contact Mary Fran and, and, and you can check out her speaking online and, and her writing. And, and, and if your organization or group or church is looking for – a particularly powerful speaker. I think she would be useful for you. So um, what's next for you? What are you, what are you working on right now? I'm actually, believe it or not, thinking of republishing uh, the first book that I wrote, which was very humorous and, and light. I'm, I'm in a happy place right now. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of want to put that, that joy back out into the world. But that being said, it has always been, um, and will always continue to be a part of my life to support the families of those who are in the addiction community, because mm. there's so much focus on the addict as there needs to be that the families, particularly the mothers and fathers, 
you know, you throw yourself in front of a bus if you could save your kid, but yeah. you can't. And it's a very complex web of how to deal with an addict because they're very manipulative. They know how to push your buttons. They know that you're afraid that they're going to die, quite frankly. So they use that. And it's it's really important to give them the support to say, I'm certainly not telling you to throw your kid out or whatever, but you you have to recognize that some point, the only thing you can do is lead them to the Lord. That's you right. can give them tools. You can give them access to, to things that will help them heal, but they have to make the steps. And that's the hardest thing for a parent to realize that you can't fix them or save them. So I do a lot in that arena and will always continue to. Wow. Beautiful. Well, nine grandkids, family, you got a lot, you got a lot going on, a boundless amount of energy. And I really appreciate you taking the time today to spend half an hour with us. I promised you about 30 minutes. We're right on it. Um, Mary Fran, just a, such a blessing to know you and to be a small part of your world. And I, I pray the best for you and your family. Thank you, Lee. And I feel that likewise, as I hope you know. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Hey, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack.com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery, drleewarren.substack.com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarrenmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.